Hey there, diplomacy enthusiasts. Remember when Canada and India were best buds? Yeah, me neither. Turns out, things are getting frosty between these two Commonwealth comrades. We're talking accusations, expulsions, and enough diplomatic drama to make a Bollywood movie jealous. So, what's the beef? Well, grab your diplomatic dictionaries and put on your political thinking caps, because things are about to get real. This isn't just some diplomatic spat over tea and biscuits. It's a high-stakes standoff with global implications. Buckle up, folks. Hold on to your maple syrup. Canada just dropped a truth bomb. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, usually known for his chill vibes and charming socks, made a shocking accusation. India might be involved in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil. Yikes! We're talking about Hardeep Singh Najjar, a Sikh activist who was gunned down in British Columbia. Canada believes Indian agents might be connected to his death. India, understandably, isn't too happy about these accusations. This isn't a parking ticket. It's a serious allegation with potentially earth-shattering consequences. India isn't taking these accusations lying down. Absurd and motivated are just a few of the words they've used to describe Canada's claims. India denies any involvement in Nijar's death and sees this as an attempt to smear their reputation. They're pointing the finger right back at Canada, accusing them of harboring Sikh separatists and not doing enough to curb extremism. It's a diplomatic game of he said, she said, but with much higher stakes. This is a classic case of two countries with very different narratives. Who's telling the truth? The plot thickens. Things just got real. Both Canada and India have started expelling diplomats. It's like a diplomatic version of musical chairs, except nobody's laughing. Canada kicked out a top Indian diplomat, and India retaliated by expelling a Canadian diplomat. This tit-for-tat expulsion is a clear sign of deteriorating relations. It's a serious escalation that could have ripple effects across various sectors, from trade to travel. Expelling diplomats is no joke. It's a big deal in the diplomatic world. It's basically saying, we don't trust you and we don't want you here. Ouch! This isn't just about Canada and India, it's about a deeper, more intricate web of relationships and identities. There's a third player in this diplomatic drama, the Sikh community, which has a rich history and a vibrant presence in both countries. The accusations against India stem from the alleged targeting of Sikh activists who have been vocal about their demands for justice and recognition. This has put the Sikh diaspora in a difficult position, torn between their heritage and their adopted homeland. Many Sikhs in Canada are demanding justice for Nijar, a prominent figure whose case has become a rallying point for the community. They are navigating their ties to both countries, balancing their cultural identity with their civic responsibilities. It's a complex situation with no easy answers, involving historical grievances, political aspirations, and personal loyalties. This highlights the human cost of this diplomatic row, affecting families and communities on a deeply personal level. Imagine being caught between a rock and a hard place, where every decision feels like a compromise of your identity. That's the reality for many Sikhs right now, and their voices deserve to be heard. Their stories are a testament to the resilience and complexity of human identity in a globalized world. As they strive for justice and recognition, they also seek to maintain their cultural heritage and contribute positively to their community. Their journey is a reminder that in the midst of political tensions, the human spirit continues to seek understanding, justice, and peace. Canada is standing firm on its accusations against India. They're calling for a thorough investigation and demanding answers from India. Some applaud Trudeau for taking a strong stance against a powerful nation, especially when a Canadian citizen's life is at stake. However, others criticize Trudeau's approach, arguing that he's jeopardizing Canada's relationship with India for political points. They say this aggressive stance could backfire and harm Canada's interests in the long run. Is Canada taking a principled stand or is this a calculated political move? Only time will tell. India sees Canada's accusations as an affront to its sovereignty. They argue that Canada is meddling in their internal affairs and that the allegations are baseless. India's position is clear. They won't be bullied by Canada or any other country. They believe that Canada's actions are driven by domestic politics, particularly pandering to the Sikh community for votes. India insists that they are a responsible nation and will not tolerate being portrayed as a rogue state. 
India's message is loud and clear. We make our own rules and we don't need your lectures. The U.S. is caught in the middle of this diplomatic brawl, a situation that has been brewing for some time. As a close ally of both Canada and India, the U.S. is trying to stay neutral, urging both sides to de-escalate the situation. This neutrality, however, is not just a simple stance, but a calculated move to maintain its influence and relationships in the region. However, this is a delicate balancing act. The U.S. must carefully navigate the complex web of international relations, where one wrong move could tip the scales and lead to unintended consequences. The U.S. has its own strategic interests in the region, and taking sides could have unintended consequences. The stakes are high, with economic, military, and political implications that could reverberate globally. They're walking a diplomatic tightrope, hoping to avoid a full-blown crisis. The U.S. is employing all its diplomatic tools, from back-channel communications to high-level meetings, to keep the situation under control. The US is like that friend trying to mediate between two friends who are about to come to blows. It's a role that requires patience, tact, and a deep understanding of the underlying issues. Can they keep the peace or will they get caught in the crossfire? The outcome remains uncertain, but one thing is clear. The US's role as a mediator is crucial in preventing further escalation and maintaining stability in the region. This standoff between Canada and India is more than just a bilateral dispute. It has global implications. The world is closely observing how these two democratic nations navigate this complex situation, which could set a precedent for how similar conflicts are managed in the future. It raises questions about how democratic nations handle disagreements, especially when serious allegations are involved. The stakes are high and the decisions made here could influence diplomatic strategies and international policies for years to come. It also highlights the growing tensions between India and the West, particularly on issues like human rights and freedom of speech. These are fundamental values that democracies hold dear, and any perceived compromise on these fronts can lead to significant political and social unrest. The world is watching to see how this plays out, and the outcome could have lasting consequences for international relations. The ripple effects of this standoff could influence global alliances, trade agreements, and even the balance of power in international politics. This isn't just about Canada and India, it's a test for democracies around the world. How these nations handle their differences will be a benchmark for other countries facing similar issues. The principles of diplomacy, negotiation, and mutual respect are being put to the test. Can we disagree without resorting to diplomatic warfare? This question is at the heart of the current situation. The ability to resolve conflicts through dialogue and compromise is a cornerstone of democratic governance. The situation between Canada and India is indeed a significant test for democracies globally. It challenges the very fabric of international diplomacy and the principles that underpin it. The world is keenly observing how these two nations will navigate this intricate web of political, social and economic factors. How we handle these disputes could set precedents for future international conflicts. The strategies employed here could become a blueprint for resolving similar issues elsewhere, influencing global diplomatic practices it's crucial for democratic nations to find ways to resolve their differences without escalating into a diplomatic war. The success or failure of these efforts will not only affect Canada and India, but could also shape the future of international diplomacy and the global order. So, what does the future hold for Canada and India? It's hard to say for sure, but one thing's certain, this rift won't be easily mended. The accusations are serious and both sides seem entrenched in their positions. There's a lot at stake. Trade relations, security cooperation, and even people-to-people -people ties. It will take time, dialogue, and a willingness to compromise from both sides to rebuild trust and find a way forward. Will Canada and India be able to repair their fractured relationship, or is this the beginning of a new era of mistrust and animosity? This is where you come in. What do you think about this diplomatic showdown? Do you think Canada is right to accuse India? Or do you believe India's claims of innocence? 
Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's get a conversation going. And don't forget to take our poll to let us know where you stand on this critical issue. Your voice matters. Let's make some noise and show the world that we care about diplomacy and international relations.